beautiful puddings. Welcome to our Halloween special of Kitty's Classroom. Today we're going to be making a mandrake and ghost. You'll be able to get the patterns for these two on my website. I'll put a link below. And it's basically just going to be a good tutorial for beginners if you want to make one as your first doll. The mandrake is a little bit more complicated than the ghost but that's okay, I'll talk you through it. Now I've got a list of everything that you need and everything that you do. So let's get into it. First off, we're gonna make our little ghosty. I've got my patterns all printed out, ready to be cut. My felt, needles, pins, thread. I've got both black and white so I can sew the face and the bow and wipe for the body. And little button eyes, my scissors, and I've got some old makeup that I can do little rosy cheeks and some details with and a little tip if you don't want to be going and buying ribbon is have a look on some of your clothes you might find a little loop that they use to hang the clothes up when that's only got a thin strap or something like that so it doesn't fall off the hanger and you can chop that off and use that perfectly fine I do have two so I can get a good length around the neck and to make a bow alrighty oh and stuffing can't forget stuffing let's get started to make the ghost, we need the head, the arm, and these two little body parts here with its little wispy tail. You don't need anything else unless you're gonna make a mandrake. So we'll cut those out, and then we'll start sewing them up. Now we're gonna cut our pieces out of felt. We need two heads, two of the wispy body, two of the other side of the body and four arms and that's it. It's a good idea to mark the top and bottom of your head pattern so that you can make sure you can sew the face on evenly and I always start sewing my head at the bottom so it's great to make sure you get it all nice and straight. Pop in the bottom, just pop it in like that so you can see where the center line is. So in my instructions, I've put to sew the arms first, but I'm going to sew up the center seam just so I can show you that both the pieces for the body say center seam in the center. And you want to make sure that you sew both of them together this way. Because if you sew this outer seam to there, it's going to end up all kinds of funny shapes. You want to make sure that you sew this flatter seam together. So you want to go in opposite ways so that you have one for the front and one for the back. The tails curl this way and then you've got the smaller piece on top. And we can sew those, sew the arms and sew the little face. We've got our two body pieces and we're going to start pinning them together. Making sure that the seam is nice and lined up there. And you have to make sure the most important thing with this little ghosty is that you stuff the little tail or wisp or whatever you want to call it as you're sewing. And if you've never sewn before, if this is something that you want to attempt as your first little doll, it is a great one to do as your first doll. But I do recommend going and watching my mini dolls video. I will leave that link below because it'll show you a lot of little tips and tricks about how to get started doing your blanket stitch and things like that. Whereas this, I'm just going to show you the steps on how to put these guys together. Alrighty, so we'll do this now. And we're going to stuff the little tail wispy bit. I use this orange wood stick to get everything right down in the bottom. Sewing up this little arm and then it'll be time to sew Ghosty's little face. Now you can paint the face if you like or you can embroider it with thread or like I'm going to do in this video I'm going to use little button eyes and then sew a piece of felt on the little mouth but you can do it however you like. And then we're going to stuff the little arms and this is when you're going to need a little kind of stuffing tool. You can get it in otherwise, but it is a little bit difficult. Using the end of a paintbrush or something like that is good. I like to use this orange wood stick and it gets in there nice and tight in all the little details. 
the little face in your pattern has a pretty good guide about where to put your doll's eyes and mouth. You don't want to put your mouth too low because that's where your neck will go and it will cover it. So you want to make sure it's nice and high because when you stuff the head it will round as well. So you will lose anything that's like down here. The eyes are basically in the middle. You can move them wherever you want but if you want it to turn out like in the picture then that's a good little guide. And we're going to sew the eyes on. I'm going to put a little bit of black makeup around these ones and some little cheeks and I'll do a little mouse in the top. So I just cut a little mouth out of some black felt. And good thing I've got my pin all lined up where the center is. And you could just glue it on if you wanted if you had some fabric glue. You can also use PVA glue, but you have to be careful that you're not putting too much because otherwise it will seep through into the front of the felt. So I'm just going to sew it on quickly. And then we can sew the head up and sew it onto the body. Now the little mouth is sewn, we can do the, sew the head pieces together. Pin them in place. I can take this pin out now because I know that if I put the knot underneath the mouth so it'll be disappeared or into the neck oh. don't forget when you're sewing your little head up to leave a gap so you can stuff it otherwise you'll just have a flat head and you'll be like a little deflated ghost Whee! We are up to doing the little ghost's arms now. I've got one arm pinned on and pin the other one on. Now you can do this with a bead or you can do it how I'm gonna do it by just putting a little X. As long as you're not going straight through the same hole, you are fine. You need a needle and you have to make sure that it's gonna be longer then the body and the arms combined. So it's only just a fraction longer, but it'll work because I can squish it down a little bit and sew it straight through. So we're gonna go in one side, well, I'll put a knot in and I'll come through the back and we'll come one side through, put the bead or an X on there and then come back through. That kind of sounds <laughs> complicated, but it's really not. I'll show you how to do it. Don't worry, we can hold hands and do it at the same time. I like to start by pushing my needle between the two layers of felt in the back or in the side and you want to make sure you're not just stabbing it in like you're actually getting in between the two pieces of felt so you can pull the knot through and because I'm doing a little X it's going to be a bit bigger than if I was doing a bead so I'm going to make sure I go nice and high pull that knot through but don't pull it so hard that you're going to pull it through the front of the arm do a little X Make sure you're going behind the line of stitching at the back and come out in the same spot in the other arm. Okay. Ooh, that's not what you want. Put it nice and tight and then do your other little half of a little X here and we'll repeat that in that one spot three times so it's nice and tight. Now if you're doing this with a bead, you'll just have to do it straight across instead of doing a little X pattern. Now we'll go down at the bottom. So see how that one's got a little X now? We'll do the same thing on the other side. So this doesn't give as much mobility as the beads nice little quick way to secure the arms on you could just do it as a stitch and not an x but i like the x it's cute it's pretty secure and then i'll pull the needle into the back of the neck tie it off I 
and for all intents and purposes, your little ghost is done. So I just need a little bit of makeup and a little bow, and he's all done. Woohoo! Just a quick tip when I'm making my bows. I use a lighter very carefully. If you're young and you're watching this, make sure you get your parents to help you. To burn the end of the ribbon, because otherwise it'll fray. Just clunder there. Now do you see how that's like finished edge? Try and see if I can get a bit closer. And it ever so slightly just melts the edge of the polyester ribbon so that you can have it ooh, without fraying. So I've already got my little bow bits, I don't know what to call it, the loopy bits. And I've got a little short bit. A little bit of glue on there. Maybe cut this. I do usually um, burn this bit off as well. But because it's going to be glued down, I'm not going to worry. So we've got our little loopy bit. And I do always recommend having a particular paintbrush that you use for just glue and don't use all your paintbrushes in glue. You will waste them. There you go, perfect little cheetah's bow. Now we're gonna do the neck of the ghost and I'm just gonna put a blob of glue where I'm gonna be putting this bow. So just here, kind of covering the stitching. Normally I would sew this bit as well but you can do it whichever way you like. Try and get it up over that arm. Maybe put a little bit of glue on the back. See what I mean about this glue dries really quickly? Gets very clumpy. Paint around the front. Make sure it overlaps a tiny bit. You can do this with felt as well if you like. You, you don't need a bow. You can do whatever you want. You can put flower, anything. Get a little bit on the felt too. It's dry already. Sticking down. And see what I mean about how if you had the face down low, the mouth, it's going to disappear into the neck. Get a nice good dollop. Pull on the back of the bow. And this cheetah's way of making a bow is good when you only have a single sided ribbon. Instead of double sided, because if you try and tie a nice bow in single sided ribbon, it's gonna look gross. Stick it on there. Cute! Alright, I'm gonna give it some more little treats and a little bit of spooky eye makeup, and the little ghost is all done. Little ghosty is now done. So cute with little arms and little wisps. 
Listen, that's what we took a poll a while ago to talk about what this part of a ghost is called, and we came to the conclusion it's a wisp. Not sure if that's scientifically accurate, but that's what my followers and my lovely little dolly community have declared it, so that's what it shall be. <gasps> no eyelashes! Oh, I'm gonna have to add some little eyelashes, sneaky sneaky. You'll probably see them at the beginning of this video when you'll see this guy and the mandrake all done. But that's it for this little ghosty. And I would love to see them if you make one. Make sure you tag me on Instagram. And don't forget you can get the pattern for this little one on my website, which will be linked below. Ooh. So here we've got our little mandrake pattern. We're going to use the same head and arm as we use for a little ghosty. This is the little top bit here. And this bit here is the little tiny top bit here. We've got a couple of leaves. There is actually another one on the pattern I have edited it since I printed this out. So there's a little tiny baby leaf. We're going to use the mandrake body. We need four of those and we've got four legs. So we'll get him all cut out and start sewing. So we've got all our little pattern pieces cut. You're going to need two head pieces, four body pieces, four arm pieces, four leggy leg pieces, two big tops, two little tops and however many little leaves you want. Technically, you could have just one big top bit if you wanted. You could have two little top bits. You could have three. You could do whatever you want. The top bit does have a little line just here, and that's just so that you know where to sew it on like this. If you're wanting to needle felt it, which is how I'm gonna do it, it will be quite easy, I'll show you. Or you can sew it, or you can glue it, or you can do it however you want but we're gonna needle felt it on and that line's just to show you where the guide is because the edge is kind of rounded so you could get a little bit confused. So we're gonna cut it out. We've got a medium brown for the body, a dark brown for the little needle felted details that I'm gonna do, a medium green for the leaves and sage green for the little leaves as well. So we'll cut them out now. We've got our little mandrake body all cut out now and I'm going to sew the face on first before doing any needle felting details on there and I'm going to stitch some details on the leaves. I'm sewing the detail on these little leaves but you could use felt you could needle felt them, you could paint them, you could do beading, you can do whatever. You could just leave it blank if you wanted. But I like doing a little bit of embroidery, you can do fancy embroidery, whatever you want to do. Think outside the box, you could do pink leaves, you could do a whole pink monochrome scale mandrake if you wanted, that'd be so cute. And then we do a little blanket stitch around the leaves. So you do cut two of each leaf that you want so that you have a front and a back. Well, you can just cut one if you wanted, but if you want to sew any detail, then you're going to want two so you can hide the back of it. And I just like it to be a little bit thick and chunky. So we do a little stitch around that and then the leaves will be finished. But we don't sew them on until the very end. Now we are up to our little needle felting part. This part is optional. You can embroider it or paint it or whatever you want to do. I have got this one little leg already done. And if you don't know what needle felting is, it's using this type of needle. And you're not really going to be able to see, but it has tiny little barbs on the end of the needle, which actually catch the felt and pull it into itself which sounds kind of strange. What I use is a piece of felt and a strong thick doll making needle and I just kind of tear the edge of the felt apart. This is if you don't have felting wool. If you have felting wool just go for gold but I do this when I like to get the right colours and I only need a tiny bit and you can get your little fluffs. You could also use um, any kind of yarn or anything like that. So you pull it off and then felt it. I also have a felting block it's just like a sponge 
You can get it as a mat or a brush. You could even use a dish sponge if you want it. And I also have my mini iron, which when I've felted it, I just give it a little iron and on the inside as well to make it all nice and flat. See, there's a bit that's not flat. Can you see that? But I don't usually do it on the desk because it will make it weird. I have a little cloth that I do it on. So we're gonna do that. But like I said, it's optional. You don't have to do it. It's just if you wanted to try any felting or if you already have the stuff, you can do it. Now I'll show you how. So I've got my little leg. And this block has been used a lot, which is why it's all divided. And then we get some fluff. I just give it a little bit of a roll so it's nice and tight. Put it across in a little line. And then we just stab it down. And you have to make sure you don't stab yourself because it is extremely sharp. And when pulling the fluff off, I would not use a needle felting needle to pull the fluff off the felt like I just showed you because it's very fine and it will break. And the big needle that I had is a doll making needle and you can buy them in a pack of specific doll making needles and they do come up with really long ones so that you can do the bead method like I showed you or you can do button jointed or however you want to do them. That's what they're designed for, to go through the whole length of a doll. There we are, got a few little bits on here. See how it's really fluffy on the back? I like to just line it down so it's nice and flat. You can leave it if you like the texture on the front, that's fine. You also don't need to run out and buy a mini iron. You can use regular iron if you wanted. Or even a clean hair straightener. I have used that. You just have to be really careful. And make sure you're using 100% wool felt. If you're ironing acrylic felt, it will shrink, it might melt, and it will distort. There we go. And I'm going to do the whole body, legs, tummy, arms, face, and the little tops. I've already done this one. Yes. We'll do that. And then we'll come back and sew the little feet and the hands. Now we're gonna sew the head up. You wanna make sure you've got your center points lined up. And I'm gonna leave one pin in the top so we've got a good marker for where the little top bit goes. And we'll sew the whole way around, stuff his head, and then sew the body. Now it's time to sew his tummy up and you want to make sure you've got the two straighter edges that are marked center seam in the pattern and sew them together because that'll be your center front and your center back. When you've got your front and your back pieces little, little seams sewn up, you can sew them together. Now we're ready to sew little mandrake's head onto its body. It's easier for me when I do it upside down so I can line everything up. Make sure you line the seams up. Try and tuck all your stuffing in. That's a little bit wonky. Okay, try again. That's better. Now we can sew his head on. time to sew arms and legs. We're going to start where we usually would, sew most of the way around the leg and then stop about here and it'll be the same on the arm. Sew most of the way around and stop just here 
and then we're going to put in our roots so we'll sew this rest of this leg up and then I'll show you how to put the roots on and I'm actually going to tie this thread off so that it doesn't get in the way we're going to tie it off and we're going to put a tiny bit of stuffing in the end of the little foot because you don't want to catch either the front or the back while you're doing this because then you're going to have a whole world of things to undo Just that tiny little end bit that's sewn. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tie a knot in one end. Thread the other end of her needle like you normally would. Hello normal sewing. And then we're going to go inside the leg. Come out wherever you want your roots to be. And then just chop it off and I usually just put all my lengths I don't chop them too short and then when I've got as many as I want then I go and trim them and make them look cute because you can kind of fray the edges out a little bit it looks a little bit more root like so you do that on all the arms and the legs and then put them together but that's that's a little bit of ways so we'll go and do all the roots now Now we've got all our little roots, it's time to sew up the rest of the limbs and then sew the arms and legs on. It's time to sew up the little head bit that goes on the top and the thing to be careful with this one is we're only going to sew it from here around to here and then we're going to stuff it and as a little test before it goes on the head because you don't want to over stuff it because then it will sit kind of funny you want to make sure you've got it stuffed the right amount to fit on the head and that goes for whether you're sewing it on or needle felting or however you want to do it we'll sew this first and then we'll sew the arms and legs I told you, you're not getting more biscuits. I might need a little bit more stuffing at the back. It's a little bit hollow there. Just a tiny bit more. At the back. Mostly in the center, and I don't want any of these little stuffing fluffs hanging down while I'm needle felting it. Oh, I'm going to be needle felting over the brown bits. So like I said, you could needle felt them on or you can sew them on. You could even glue it on if you wanted. And the main thing with the needle felting is to just make sure you've got a good barrier to hold it on. Don't have to do it like every single little tiny millimeter. 
but the part that is important well to me anyway is the edge I do make sure that I get the edge in all pushed in so that it's nice and seamless and a little help with that as well is to use the iron once you're finished once you're happy with how it is you can use the iron on the edge to, to kind of smooth it out and the ironing will help to get rid of all the little needle felting holes can you see those don't ask me to how and why that happens but it does and this one I might have to sew I'll just sew a little stitch on either side if you see my other videos where I make animals and things like that my bigger dolls that's how I do their ears as well I felt them on but I will do a little stitch just a little safety stitch to make sure it's secure so I'm gonna put a little safety stitch in I'm just gonna slip it inside here <laughs> don't worry my cat's not starving to death she is just a gluttonous little piggy she has actually had breakfast so don't worry Come out on the other side. That one's not staying down very well just because it's really small. That's why we're putting the stitch in. And then I'll just give it a bit more of a felt in there. And I might actually just put a couple stitches here to make sure this is super held down. You're not really going to see the back much anyway. I'm just waiting for my iron to warm up and we can give that a good iron. Now, like I said, you can put as many bits on top as you've wanted. You could just have one big one, you could have three small ones, big one and a small one like I have. You can do whatever you like. You can just alter the pattern. It's relatively easy once you've got your base shapes. Now it's time to put the legs on and I've got to decide which leg I want to go in front because the legs cross over each other like this. Maybe we'll put this one in front. So if you've seen the mini doll video, it's pretty much the same. Just kind of line it up in the middle of the seam, maybe about 1.5 centimeters from the neck. And always do the legs first because if you sew the arms first, they're going to get in the way of sewing the legs. So you always sew the legs on first. <laughs> it's kind of creepy like that. So this is where you want your long doll making needle that I was talking about before because you need a needle that's long enough to go through both the legs and the body. Using your small little sewing needle is not going to cut it. You could just sew the limb on onto the hip, that would be fine. But if you want to use this method where you go all the whole way through then you're going to need a long needle. So just like before when I did these little top bits. We're just going to slip the needle in between two pieces of felt. It's kind of hard seeing it on the brown, isn't it? And out on the leg. And it's just the same as sewing the ghost's arms on as well, just a bit of a bigger X up here. Make sure we're pulling the knot through, but not all the way through the leg. So we did that three times on each side, did a little stitch and once again you could also do this with a bead or a button. It's hard now. Now we're going to do the other half of the X, we're going to do it on the other side. If your thread's too short, you can just cut it off at the eye of the needle and use a shorter needle to tie your knot with. 
instead of trying to struggle with this big one. But you have to make sure your thread's nice and long before you do that. Okay, so this one I believe will be sewn together like this so that they cross over. You could leave them like this if you wanted, but I like them to be crossed over like a little roots. First I'm going to sew the arms. And it's the exact same method that we just used. Little cross. I'm just going to pin it at the top and the bottom so that the pins aren't in the way. When you're done sewing your arms on, just pull it up behind the neck and sew your knot off there. Done. Sewing your legs to each other is relatively easy. I'm just going to cross them over, put a little pin in the back so it's pinned onto the other one. Don't be careful, don't pin yourself. And I'm just going to put a few stitches in behind there to sew the two layers onto each other. Make sure you pull it nice and tight, otherwise, it's just going to be all floppy. put the leaves on. I didn't really trim the roots I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a fluff and then they'll be fine because I like them like this. Maybe she on this one because it's got a bit of a chunky bend in it. Pin our leaves on. if you wanted to get super creative put a little bit of wire in the leaves and then you could bend them and shape them how you wanted all done little mandrake with his little legs and little roots you could always make a little pot as well for your mandrake to go in if you wanted if you guys want me to make a little pattern for that let me know in the comments and let me know what you think do you want to make a little mandrake or a ghost and there you have it they're both done Whee! if you made these guys along with me please make sure you tag me on instagram or you can send them through I'd love to see your designs. You guys are always so much more creative than me. Which one's your favourite? Let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions, let me know as well. I love you guys so, so much. I hope you have a happy Halloween, happy making, and I'll see you all soon. Bye!